So hi, um, we as ProBlam had a look at the Hydra boosters in the last couple of days. And yeah, in this quick demo, I want to show or yeah present some of the results that we got from our measurements. So for everyone who's not that familiar with Hydra boosters, Hydra boosters um, attempt to cover the whole hash space in the, in the DHT so that every time you provide something to the network, you hit one Hydra booster. And so that if anyone else tries to retrieve that CID will also hit a Hydra booster and uh, gets is this content or the, the provider record uh, much faster than uh, if it was uh, without those Hydras. And so, as I said, the Hydras um, attempt to cover the whole hash space. And so we just, um, yeah, at, at first we wanted to, to verify this uh, proposition here. The first thing that we uh, took a look at is if there's actually a uniform distribution of ha um, hash, um, hash, uh, sorry, Hydra hats. And in this graph, we can see that's the case. So it's, it should be a, a straight line. And uh, yeah, well, that's the case. And the other thing is, um, is a Hydra head actually in the proximity of the 20 closest peers for every every peer we can find in the network? And for that, we took um, full network crawls um, from, from Nebula, then put all of those peer IDs in a binary try and uh, calculated for each peer ID in the network, the 20 closest peers and checked whether a Hydra head is actually inside the proximity of these 20 closest peers. And the results um, show that it's actually the case. So in this particular example, we had around 16,200 peers in the DHT. And for 15,000 CS 700, um, there was actually a Hydra head close by, which makes up more than 97% coverage of the whole uh, of the whole hash space. And so this gives us an excellent advantage into the network. Um, yeah, just a reminder, the provider record consists of a CID, TTL, and a provider, um, multi-hash. And also those um, <laughs> Hydra boosters have peer records, so in, in memory. And what we can do now is we can take all the provider records that the Hydras know of and correlate um, the providers with their uh, multi addresses and in turn the um, geolocation from the IP addresses. So we can actually tell where on the uh, in the world the CIDs actually reside. Um, since I'm short on time, I think I will skip the architecture. And um, so maybe just some general information. And the Hydra boosters know uh, of around 1 billion CIDs each day, 1 billion unique CIDs. So this is on the x-axis in the days of the last week. And what we can see here is um, if we take the set intersection between two days, we see that only around 500 million CIDs actually uh, intersect here, which means that in each day, around 50% of all CIDs churn and leave the network. And if we assume that a CID covers around 256 kilobytes of worth of data, this means every day 120 terabytes leave the, data, uh, leave the network, but also um, join the network again. And so this is just the CID churn graph is just another um, representation of exactly that. And um, what we can do is check um, which are the top providers. So here we can see um, which peer IDs actually um, provide how many CIDs. And if we just take a look at the top provider here, this is just one peer in the network. And this one peer provides around 13% of all CIDs um, of the whole network. And this goes down, This the next one is nine, around 9%, 7%, and so on. And so um, what we wanted to do now is actually find out who those peers are. And for that, um, well, we I, I thought these are maybe gateways or large pinning services and so on. And so we developed a tiny tool that's called uh, Antares that you can see here, um, which is just a tool that sits there. It's a lip to peer host. It provides content to the network and then requests that content through a gateway or through a pinning service and then just tracks which peer ID actually requested this content. And uh, I forgot to say, say this content is random and so no one else should know about it. And so if others request that content, we can track um, which peer IDs belong to which services. And um, well, I'm running out of time, otherwise I would have show, shown you that. Um, but it turns out none of the, well, I, I checked it with Infura and with Pinata, none of them um, correspond to these large pinning services. 
and uh, also it's not not no gateways um, or so on and uh, so but i'm leaving it running maybe i will discover uh, some of them and maybe just one last thing um if we take it as i said we can correlate cids or provider records with provider records with peer records and then in turn with the geolocation um, we can have this country distribution that I told you uh, about, and we see that more than 50% of all CIDs can be associated, associated with, this, with the US and then the Netherlands and France. So these are all uh, also quite uh, interesting results, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, we are also looking at the, the dependence um, of, for, for content retrievals and con content publications. And uh, right now we are running experiments um, where we exclude hydras from content retrievals and uh, content uh, publications and just check how the, um, how the performance differs there. And um, yes, so these will be the next steps.